The American Civil War was a divisive time that is very often misunderstood or misconstrued when viewed through the lens of modern society. Within the scope of this view, we are apt to miss the nuances of what led the individual man to march off to war. Oftentimes, when we speak of what caused the country to go to war, we are speaking to the intentions of the governments and those states, and not necessarily to what drove the common southerner to war. Aside from the fact that more than half of the Confederate army had been conscripted into service, there were a great many Confederate soldiers who joined the Confederacy in an effort to exert their right to defend their homes against an invading force. One such demonstration of this nuance can be found in the African-American soldiers who joined with the Confederacy and fought to defend their communities. While there are numerous examples of this, one of the best documented is the case of Henry Brown. In Darlington, South Carolina, there is a marker dedicated to Henry Dad Brown, a local resident and free black man who served as a veteran in three American wars. The Mexican-American War, between 1846 and 1848, the American Civil War, between 1861 and 1865, and the Spanish-American War in 1898. Known affectionately as Dad, Henry Brown was born near Camden, South Carolina in 1830, and while he was a free black man, how Brown came to obtain his freedom varies by account, with some holding that he was born into freedom, and others saying that he purchased his freedom and that of his wife, Laura Cannon Brown, who was one of the founders of the Macedonia Baptist Church. Prior to the war, Brown made a good living in Darlington, South Carolina as a reputable brick mason and owned a great deal of land with holdings of more than 500 acres. Brown believed in spreading the wealth, apprenticing young masons, and offering financial help to those in need regardless of their race. Perhaps owing to his sense of community, Brown willingly enrolled as a drummer with the Darlington Guards in 1861 and followed his fellow citizens into danger fighting for the Confederacy when the Civil War broke out. Battlefield drummers played a key role in communication during the war, as verbal orders could easily be obscured by the sound of battle. During the war, Brown served as a musician, fighting in several battles on the line with the 8th and 21st South Carolina Infantry Regiments, including the 1st and 2nd Battle of Manassas, the Seven Days Battle, the Battle of the Wilderness, Spotsylvania, Cold Harbor, Sharpsburg, Chickamauga, and Gettysburg, to name a few. During the Battle of Manassas on Sunday, July 21, 1861, Brown captured a pair of Union drumsticks after his original drumsticks had been damaged, with one account saying they had been shot out of his hands, and he used those Union drumsticks for the remainder of the war. At the close of the war, Brown's reputation drew him into public service and he was elected the coroner of Darlington County. However, his term of service was ended in resignation after Brown grew frustrated by the pervasive corruption and crooked dealing that characterized much of the Reconstruction period. Brown also went on to serve again as a drummer in the Spanish-American War in 1898. Henry Brown died in 1907 and was laid to rest beside his wife Laura at Cannon Cemetery, a small family cemetery. His funeral was attended by Darlington residents, both white and black, as well as the former Confederate veterans that Brown served with. His casket was covered in a Confederate battle flag, and members of the UCV acted as his pallbearers. These excerpts from the following articles mention the life and service of the Confederate veteran Henry Dad Brown from those who knew him personally, followed by a news account of his funeral. General W.E. James, on the occasion of Henry Brown's death, wrote the following. There was a funeral in Darlington Sunday afternoon, which whites and blacks attended in almost equal numbers. There were many ladies in the church, and the pallbearers were twelve of the leading white citizens of the town, headed by the Honorable C.S. McCullough, mayor. The Darlington guards acted as an honor escort, and the Reverend D.M. Fulton, pastor of the Presbyterian Church, conducted the services, assisted by the Reverend J.J. Jefferson of the Colored Presbyterian Church. A large representative concourse followed the remains from the humble little home to the grave, and when the last words were spoken, the bugler of the Darlington Guard sounded taps, and the soldiers fired a volley of three rounds over the still form of the newly made grave. And this, in brief, is the story of the funeral of Henry Brown, 
a black man who in his life had been true to all, white and black alike, and when the end came, there were many sorrowing eyes who were saddened at the death of a good man whose name has always been a household word for generations in Darlington. Henry Brown, familiarly and affectionately known as Old Uncle Dad Brown, died at his home here Saturday evening. His life was an example to his race and others, and his death, even though he had added nearly another score of years to the allotted span, is felt as a loss by the entire community. For Henry Brown, simple in his creed, untutored and modest in his sterling worth, accomplished in his devotion to principle, was above all things a man. He fought a good fight when men were needed to do the fighting, and he kept the faith amid reluctant and faithless ones upon whom the flames of service rested. Henry was never a slave, but came to Darlington from Camden when he was quite a little child. For more than 80 years he lived his life here, and his character and his deeds proclaimed in no uncertain tones that the spirit animated him. The record of his years brought him to the respect and esteem of all, even as it reflected honor upon the unobtrusive man who always was equal to the promptings of conscience and to the calls of duty. Henry was a veteran of three wars, and he had more to say concerning his experiences on the field than in other things. But his best work was not done when he was a follower in the Mexican, Civil, nor Spanish-American wars. He had a hard battle to fight for principle and right, but his honest old heart was as brave as it was true, and he never faltered for one moment. He was as fearless a man as one could find. He did not know mental or physical fear and the honest simplicity of his true but rugged manhood. Fear of any kind was meaningless jest to him. As a businessman and citizen, Henry was of unusual worth. A brick mason by trade, he had all he could do, and he acquired a modest competency which was honestly gained and well recognized. He went to Charleston in 1861 with my company, the Darlington Guards, and served as a drummer throughout the duration of the war. He captured a pair of drumsticks at the Battle of Second Manassas, and it is doubtful if anyone had enough money to purchase those sticks. He was a member of the Darlington Guards until the day of his death and accompanied this command on every journey except the last to Jamestown when in failing health he followed them to the station in a last vain attempt to keep step with his comrades to the rhythmic tap of his own drumbeat. In writing this, I must recall how I once saw Uncle Dad do something which will better show what stuff he was made of than I can with any words. An old ex-Confederate soldier asked me once, some years ago, where Henry was, saying that he had promised to meet him at that place at 12 o'clock. I told him that Henry was working on Mr. Hewitt's stores and that it was not 12 o'clock yet, but a few minutes after 12, old Uncle Dad, six feet tall and with his bright eyes kindling with affection, met his old comrade of other years, and after a conversation lasting more than an hour, they parted, but not before old Uncle Dad, who knew not that someone was watching, had slipped a bill into the trembling hand of the old soldier who took it most reluctantly. They parted with old dad looking affectionately with tears in his eyes at the tears streaming down the face of the old soldier. It was a twenty dollar bill that Henry had given him, and not the first one, as the old veteran told me. He said that the old drummer was helping to keep this old soldier and comrade out of the poorhouse. Henry would not discuss the subject when it was mentioned, but promptly ordered this friend to not say anything, no matter what he thought he knew. And both men are dead now, and so the story needs to be told. He has gone to join the great majority of those who marched to the tap of his own drum, and we, too, shall soon follow. If you enjoyed today's video and would like to see more content like this, be sure to take a shot at the like button, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest bird dog content. And if you'd like to support the channel, for a limited time there's exclusive Civil War Diaries merchandise available in the video link below.